Hello lovers, this is your gay auntie and welcome to Spooky Season Month. I'm excited to start knocking out stories here left and right. Today I have a special treat. I've posted over there on my podcast. You're welcome to go over there, but here I'll tell it again, once again a little bit more ad lib this time. Now, if you followed me here from TikTok, as always, I'm glad you're here. And if you found me organically, my loves, well, welcome back. I'm so happy you're here. So sit down. You're here for story time, and I'm excited to give it to you. Now, as you many of you do not know, this is now my full-time job, but I'm going with a subscription model, not a, a advertising model. So if you want to support your gay auntie, make sure I keep my bills on, my lights on, my fed, myself fed, my kitty cat fed, and help my mama with things. Feel free to scoot on to my Patreon, www.patreon.com forward slash shining Nathan. There's a three dollar level. You ain't got to, you can just subscribe, like, and enjoy a good story. Now today I'm going to give you a story from my own childhood, down from the South Texas region. Now it can be interchanged between two different stories, and it's called La Llorona. Sometimes it's either the Lady in Black or Yala Llorona, and it's especially from South Texas. As always, I'm glad you're here, my loves. So let's get into this spooky season delight that I'll be reading to y'all at now this story takes place hours south of San Antonio, down near the Nueces County, well, in Nueces County, along the Nueces River. There once was a great general, this time was so long ago that Texas was still Texas, property of Mexico. This general had founded several towns in Mexico and wanted to move and start his family in Texas. So he's founded a small town off the Nueces River and created a ranch for him and his bride to settle and start a family. He had a very prosperous ranch. He had many cattle, many, many heads of cattle, and was a firm, strong leader, but very soft as well. They had many ranch hands, maids, and much of the town helped to support the ranch. And everything was flourishing and prospering. Many strong ranch hands helped build this ranch, and he cared for it and managed it, and managed the town to grow more and more prosperous day by day, week by week, and month by month. As time went on, a few months later, him and his wife realized that it was time for them to continue on the family line, and so they were trying their best to conceive a child. After several months of trying, he stayed loving to his wife. They got a notice from Spain that a family member of his needed him back urgent for business. He knew that the travel back to Spain was very treacherous, as you stack it was back in those days, and his wife, still wanting to go back with him, was not allowed. He forbade her because he did not want to risk her on such a journey. Now his wife was a beautiful woman, dark curly hair that trailed down to the middle of her back, soft, caring, strong. She was loved by everyone in the town and loved by everyone on the ranch. But unbeknownst to her, there was one ranch hand that really did fall for her. His tail would join us a little later on in the story. She and her husband talked late into the night about if she could join, but he forbade it. The journey was treacherous, after all, and he needed somebody he trusted to manage things in the ranch while he was away. She knew the day-to-day, what needed to happen, how everything that needed to go, because she ran the ranch with him. So, knowing that it was in their benefit, and in the best needs of the town and the ranch, she decided to stay. And so they set all the affairs in order, getting everything ready, getting the transport ready, making sure everything was in place for him to go and for her to rule in his stead. The day finally came. They kissed one goodbye, and off he went on the long journey. And she ran the ranch, firm but still soft as was her wont, making sure everything ran efficiently, making sure all the ranch hands did their work and the town stayed fed and led. But unfortunately, what was supposed to be a month or two month trip started to carry on. You see, the husband 
did not realize the severity of the family matter he needed to take care of in Spain. So, two months turned to three, three turned to four, four turned to five, and into six. At this time, our lovely bride had started to show the fruits of her and her husband's actions and labors. For you see, she'd become pregnant before he'd left. She was ecstatic to Sean, beyond overjoyed, and so was the town, and so was the ranch. Until one day, a small cloud came over her, for the ranch hand had some news to tell her. For you see, over the many months of the ranch hand working at this ranch, he had mistaken kindness for affection, tenderness for love, and he convinced himself that he was in love with the bride, La Doña. He convinced himself that it was not infatuation of her, but deep-seated love. And not only that infatuation, but he grew jealous of her husband, La Don. So more and more he had convinced himself of this. And finally he grew resolute that she indeed loved him too. And so he built up the courage over the last six months while her husband was away to tell her and confess his undying, unyielding love for her and for that they should run away and live together happily ever after, as the saying goes. So one night, while she was alone, embroidering in her favorite chair on the estate, he came up to her, startled, but still tender, she asked him what was his need, what was his want, and was everything okay? And in that moment, he confessed his undying, unyielding love for her, telling her how over the many, many months he knew she loved him too. As was her way, she listened attentively, but it was also her way she firmly but softly told him he was mistaken and rebuffed his advances and that he should go, and let's not talk about this further. So he did. With his pride hurt, he went back to his quarters and fumed. Thankfully, a week later, the dawn, her husband, came back to the ranch, telling her about all the stories of that it were in Spain, of the business he had to attend to, and was delighted and overjoyed at the growing baby bump that he saw on his beloved bride. All their labors had succeeded, and they rejoiced, and he threw a massive, beautiful feast for everyone in town and all the ranch hands and maids to celebrate this momentous occasion and his return. They planned, and they worked, and the day finally came. They celebrated and ate and danced together, for this was indeed a joyous occasion to continue the family line. And it was, for a time. For you see, the ranch hand still sat, fuming, ruminating, realizing his envy and enviousness of the dawn, the husband, and catched a plan. Lay in the evening, as everybody had left and everybody was going, and the dawn had now been his poor drunk, the ranch hand went to him and coaxed a hideous lie and convinced him, saying that his bride had indeed not been faithful, had not been what she perceived, and that the child most definitely was not his. The dawn, in a drunken stupor, and was the time, believed the man, and in a rage commanded the ranch hand to take his bride and deal with to take of the tallest tree at the furthest reaches of the county and deal with the situation. And he was only to take one other person as witness. And so, in the dead of night, he grabbed his wife, the bride, gagged her, and took her on horseback, him and his best friend, beaten trail as fast as they could to the outer edges of the county in the darkness of the night. They galloped for a while, 
reaching the base of a tree at the edge of the county, and he figured this was the spot, a well-known tree that everybody in the county knew, but seldom visited. He dismounted, taking her off the back of the horse, taking the hood and blindfold and ungagging her, and she began to scream, saying, why, why, why? His best friend began to lift the rope and hoist it over the strongest branch he could find of the tree and create a noose. She stared on in terror and asked more. What was the purpose of this? Wait till she told her husband. How dare he? And the ranch hand looked in her eyes and told her, This was your husband's orders for your infidelity. She screamed louder louder, proclaiming her innocence, saying she would never be unfaithful, she would never do such a thing, that this child was his, that this child was his, and she wailed and cried and screamed as much as she could, but they were too far from town for anyone to hear her. He wrapped the noose around her neck, and she cried, saying that this was his child, she was faithful, she was a good woman, this child was his. She weeped and wept and yelled and moaned as the ranch hand and his best friend began to hoist her up with the noose. Her moaning and screaming soon turned to sobs, the sobs became whimpers. Whimpers became gurgling, and then silence. The ranch hand tied her there and left her. Him and his best friend returning to the ranch by daybreak, informing the dawn of what he'd done, that it was done. The dawn wept. Now sober, he got on his best horse and rushed to the tree. He knew his ranch hadn't taken him, but he was too late. For there she was, lifeless, her full and pregnant belly sagging, and he wept. He brought her back to the ranch and had her buried. Nobody was to know of how she passed was to be sudden. The Don eventually became an alcoholic, consumed by his grief of what he'd ordered. The ranch hand took care of himself and returned to pay for his deeds in the afterlife. His best friend continued his life in a drunken stupor. There was never vengeance or justice for the bride. And so to this day, if you're driving up 281 headed north or south near a town called Alice, Texas, and it's late at night and you're the only one on the highway, you will see a woman walking along that stretch of highway. She'll be crying. She'll be screaming begging to be believed, yelling that she was faithful, this child was her husband's, crying for the man she loved. And if you look back out of your side mirrors, you'll see her gone. And if you look in your rear view mirror, she'll be in the back seat of your car, crying, and let out one scream until she's gone. And that is the version of La Llorona I was told growing up. It's one of those tales that breaks your heart. But so do a lot of spooky season tales, now don't they? As always, I love you babies. Be safe this spooky season. Drink your water. And until next time, I love you. Thank <laughs> you.